Hello everyone, welcome to Online Worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I'm Rev. Meredith Manning Brown, our lead pastor, and on behalf of everyone who is helping to lead worship, I welcome you. We're so excited that you're joining us on this Epiphany celebration. And if it's your first time to join with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church for online worship, we're particularly excited you've chosen today. I want to encourage you and everyone to use our contact form. The link to that is in the post Post and it's in the comment section. And the contact form is just a way that we can get to know you a little bit better, that we'll be able to get in touch with you, send you the e-newsletter with all of the information about ways to connect and upcoming ways to serve and worship and all of those things. And then there's also a place on that contact form for you to put prayer requests that go to our pastors and prayer team. So I encourage everybody to use our contact form today. When we gather for online worship, we do covenant together to participate and to be a blessing. When we covenant to participate, that means that we are going to do what it is that we're doing together today. This is worship. It's not just a random video you've run across. So we encourage you to turn off other distractions and other devices to maybe light a candle if that helps you to focus and then do what it is that we're doing in worship today. When it's time to pray, pray. When it's time to stand up and sing, stand up and sing and just really participate in everything we're doing. And then our covenant to blessing means that everything we're doing today, the way we're in the comment section, the way we may, may be gathered with other folks that are around us, the way that we're sending all of this worship experience out into the world, that all of it will be a blessing to everyone who encounters us today. That's our covenant to participate and to bless. Again, we are so glad that you are here. It is a special celebration of Epiphany. More about that very soon. And welcome to worship. Please join us in singing Angels from the Realms of Glory. Janet Schmidt, the organist at Douglas Avenue. Please join me in a spirit of prayer. God of starlight, disperse the darkness of our lives that we may behold the light of your love shining in every corner of our world. When we would rather not make spiritual journeys of our own, help us to put on our metaphorical walking shoes and get going on the way. Guide our footsteps in your ways that justice may flourish and peace may abound, that we may be light and help to all in need. Help us follow along with the Magi of old, that through our journeys of faith, we may also see and act through your love made real in Jesus Christ. Amen. Now let's share in the peace of Jesus Christ. You can say, please, peace be with you and respond also with you. Share that in the comments with one another and with me and with these folks in our church family. Peace be with you. Hi, I'm Joe Metz. I'm Beth Metz. And I'm Owen Metz. This is Crosby Metz. And this is Eli Metz. Peace be with you. Peace, Peace be, be with, with you. you. Hi, we're the Samaniegos. I'm Albert. This is Caleb. I'm Allison. And this little guy is Ian. Peace be with you. Hi, I'm Lauren McPherson. I am Lauren. No, you're not Lauren. What's your name? This is my window and this is Megan. <laughs> yep, Wendell. And this this is sleepyhead is Wendell. 
And this is Marigold McPherson. Um, we've been members of Douglas since this past summer. Yeah. And we wanted to tell the congregation, peace be with you. Peace be with you. It is time for small talk, like our favorite time in online worship. So I want to encourage all of the children who are with us to come in really close to your device and to your screen so that you can see and hear everything that goes on with small talk. Small talk is led by Miss Laurie, who is our director of children and youth ministries, and she's always joined by her faithful sidekick, Laud the Lamb. So let's get ready right now because it is small talk. Good morning, everybody. It is Miss Lori and Laud the Lamb and his assistant Cohen. Laud, what are you doing? Oh. oh, oh, that's why you have your friends here. We have our we have our three wise men. Yes, we have our three wise men because it's Epiphany Sunday. And Epiphany Sunday is kind of about the wise men and their journey. So you're, you're going to try to do what they're doing and follow the star? Well, buddy, um, I get it. But it's, it's kind of light outside right now. So that's going to be kind of hard. You're going to have to do this journey in the, in the dark. I know you're kind of afraid of the dark, so I'm not sure. And and the telescope is great because they followed a star, but today we do have, you know, we have GPS. You could just like plug it in and see if you could find Jesus, right? No. Hmm. Fortunately today, we don't actually have to follow a star in the sky to find Jesus. That's what Luna, the boxer, is trying to tell us right now by ringing those bells. Jesus is everywhere and he's in our heart. So we're going to try to find Jesus without a telescope, without the star in the sky. We can find him even in the bells that Luna is ringing right now. So remember to look around you, see Jesus in everything that we do. Have a great Sunday, Epiphany Sunday, guys. Bye. Good morning. I'm Steve Dunker. Welcome to worship. Our reading from the Bible is Matthew chapter 2, verses 2 through 12. I will read the story of the Magi coming to see the infant Jesus, and we will sing the verses of We Three Kings along with it. Let us open our hearts to hear what God is saying to us through our Bible reading and song. observed his star at its rising, and had come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them, Where is the Messiah to be born? They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea. For so it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means least among the rulers of Judea. For from you shall come a ruler, who is to be a shepherd of my people, Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men, and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go, and search diligently for this child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may go and pay him homage. Oh 
they set out, and there, ahead of them, went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of frankincense, gold, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. Today we are celebrating one of my very favorite holidays of the Christian Church, Epiphany. I love the images and metaphors of stars and light, journey, revelation, learning, and of course, the story of the Magi from far away who visit the young child Jesus at home in Bethlehem. And then there's all the music that goes with it. It's like an end of Christmas season hurrah of carols and celebration. The Feast of Epiphany proper is January 6th, which was Friday of this past week. And it marks the beginning of a new season in the Christian church calendar that runs all the way to the beginning of Lent on Ash Wednesday. This year, the season of Epiphany goes for six and a half weeks until the last full week of February. The name for this season, Epiphany, that word itself means manifestation or reveal. It's a season of revelation and learning, learning what it means for God to be made real in Jesus Christ for the world, in our community, and in our lives. We're taking up a learning series in worship over the next several weeks about how we welcome and embrace God's gift of diversity in all people, affirm the gifts of all people, and our commitment and practice of working with God to pursue inclusion and justice for all people. It's going to be a wonderful season, and I hope you will join with us each and every week. And that begins next weekend. Okay, now back to the Christmas and Epiphany music. We often talk about how music helps set truth and faith in our minds and in our hearts. I know, and you know, that you remember and hold close a lot more of your faith because of the songs you sing rather than the sermons you have heard. It's okay. I know it too. And it's okay for us to be honest together here. We can be real. You all know how songs stick with you, particularly those you learn as a child. Would you really know your alphabet if you didn't sing your ABCs? How about the state capitals or the periodic table? What about Amazing Grace and Jesus Loves Me? If you can sing it, you will know it deep down. So we sang together today, We Three Kings, interspersed with our Bible reading about the journey of the Magi to come and see the newly born King of the Jews, Jesus. And this is found in the Gospel of Matthew in chapter 2. If you take a close look at what the Bible story tells us about these visitors from the East and what the song has taught us singing We Three Kings, well, there are marked differences. The Bible says magi from the east came to visit, not kings, magi, M-A-G-I, like the root word for magic. They were more like astrologers or fortune tellers looking to the stars for signs about life, the world, and directions for how to behave and what to do. We also don't really know how many of them there were, two, three, 23? or how many folks traveled with them, or what else they might have brought with them. We just know that they offered three gifts to Jesus and his family, gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. 
We know that the Magi visited with King Herod in Jerusalem, alerting him to Jesus' birth, the birth of a new king of the Jews, and that did not go over very well with King Herod. We know that the Magi made it to Bethlehem, still following the star they had seen, and found Jesus and his mother at home. And we know that after worshiping Jesus and offering their gifts, God warned the Magi in a dream not to go back to see Herod as Herod had instructed them. Instead, the Magi followed God's direction and they went home by another way. That's pretty different than what we sing in We Three Kings, and yet we sing it every year and we love singing it. There's a lot of reasons for that. Fun poetry and the tune that Oompa swings along and the descriptions of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. One of the reasons I think we sing it with such joy, honestly, is the refrain. Star of wonder, star of light, star with royal beauty bright, guide us to that perfect light. Well, that's a deep truth that we sing from our hearts, isn't it? In this season of stars and light, of manifestation and revelation, we seek God's guidance to show us the way to Jesus, show us Jesus, to show us how to love and follow him, doing the things Jesus did. When I was a young child, I learned a song in my little church in Austin, Texas, in our children's choir, and it always comes rolling back into my mind and heart during this season, during Epiphany. It too is a song about stars. Stars are for those who lift their eyes. It's a poem written in the mid-20th century by Melcina Burns Denny, and it was set to music by her friend Pauline Del Monte. We're going to listen to the opening bit of it, sung by the Spivey Hall Children's Choir in Atlanta, Georgia. Let's listen. beautiful and haunting, isn't it? No wonder it has stuck with me for so long with that soaring melody and the idea that those millions of stars in the heavens are for those who will look up, who will lift their eyes. The poem goes on to describe the stars singing with the angels at Jesus' birth and the shepherds hearing this song, the proclamation of Jesus' coming and the power of his name. And then it concludes, if stormy clouds should hide the stars, no fearful thought is mine. Far beyond all earthly storms, the stars, the heavenly stars still shine. Stars are for those who lift their eyes, indeed. This song reminds me that if I am going to see where God is, what God is doing, how God is calling me. I'm going to have to look up, get my nose out of the screen and lift my eyes, get my head out of my own backside and lift my eyes, extract myself for at least a few moments from my worries, my fears, my and my and my, and lift my eyes not as a form of escapism and not just to enjoy the eternal beauty of the stars in the heavens, though that is pretty awesome, but to lift my eyes, to look for the stars that God is sending my way. When I lift my eyes and look for God's stars, I am reminded of the people and communities that have led me and helped me along the way in my journey of faith like the folks in the little church I grew up in. 
I have the opportunity to give thanks for the stars I have followed to grow in my life of faith. Who or what is that for you? Take a moment to think about that. What star or stars have you followed or are you following right now to come into a life of faith or grow in faith or even to be a part of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church? Was it family or friends? An invitation and a ride to help with a service project? Someone who deeply listened to you? An opportunity to give of yourself and your resources? An invitation to be a part of a small group or a prayer group? to join in worship online or in the sanctuary. Who are the stars that have led us, that have led you, that are leading you? I invite you to give thanks to God for those stars for just a minute. And if you want to share a little bit in the comments now, a name or a situation, or if you want to do that later, feel free to do so. When I lift up my eyes, and I reflect on those stars in my life, then I also hear God's call to be a star. And I'm not talking about being a star. God calls me, God calls you, God calls all who love and follow Jesus to be stars, to help, to invite, to bring, to welcome, to include, to affirm, to be a friend to those without friends, to walk beside others in life and circumstances, to be people who shine light on what God has done, is doing, and will do into the future. Our community, our neighborhood, here in Springfield and beyond, needs you, needs me, to shine with God's love and purpose, to show in real and tangible ways what it looks like and sounds like and feels like to love and follow Jesus today. When I lift my eyes looking for God's star, when I lift my eyes and answer God's call to shine light and be a star for others, I can also look to see where and how God is calling us together, our church, Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, into the future. What kinds of stars is God setting in the sky for us, this church, to see together? What are the yearnings, dreams, visions, and passions that God is setting on our collective hearts? What are the hurts, the brokenness, the needs of our neighborhood and city and region and beyond that God is calling us to, that God is inviting us to partner with God to be a part of God's transformative work of radical welcome and inclusion, love, hope, and healing, restoration, reformation, and justice. I believe we can lift our eyes, that we can look for these stars, that we can be stars, that we can follow God in trust and full confidence. Why? Because we know that as we seek God's direction and purpose, God doesn't just simply guide. God also brings alongside help calls forth the resources we have and calls up those resources we are growing into. God blesses, God empowers, God multiplies it all for light-shining, life-changing ministry in this community, whatever and however that looks for us in 2023 and beyond. Stars are for those who lift their eyes. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. God of light, we thank you for all the stars you have set in the sky for us, all the songs of faith that implant your truth in our hearts, and all the ways you are calling us forward to be stars for others, to shine light into the darkness. Help us to lift our eyes, to see, to follow, to be, and to act in love and justice. In Jesus' name, the light of the world, we pray. Amen. Please join us in singing Beautiful Star of Bethlehem.
One of our favorite traditions here at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church during the season of Epiphany is receiving a star word. A star word is just a word written, a single word written on a pretty piece of paper shaped like a star. This one says heart on it. And the idea is that you receive this word, you just randomly pick one, and you keep it through the next year. Put it somewhere you can see it regularly, you know, on your bathroom mirror, in your office, on your fridge, in your Bible, on your computer, next to your phone charger, whatever. And the idea is to allow the spiritual practice of considering this word to help focus and guide you for 2023. Now, you may receive a star word right off the bat and completely resonate with the word. Wow, that is obviously for me. Yes, indeed. Or you might go, what the heck does this mean? I encourage you to let it work on you and in you, even if you're like, no way, restraint, that's not for me, or quiet, who picked out this star? Just let it be and let it work on you and in you. We'd love to get a star word to you. If you'd like one, you can leave us a comment uh, if you'd like to, or just contact the church office and we'll randomly pick one out of the basket and send it to you. Or you can come by the church office and pick one up. But we encourage you at this, at this season, in this season of Epiphany, as we are searching for the revelation of Jesus to participate with us in a star word, to let it help guide you and focus you for 2023. Hi, I'm Nancy Vereen, lay leader here at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Could you go with me in prayer? Dear Lord, Christmas has ended. We have cleaned up the gift wrap, cooked the meals, and spent time with friends and family. After all of this, it seems like a good time just to rest and recover. But there is no rest here on the other side of Christmas. While the angels' words of peace and goodwill still ring in our ears, we are called to work for the holy dream of a world where we live in peace and harmony and loving one another. On the other side of Christmas, we are called to be co-creators with God, to let our lives be the kind of praise that remakes the world in the image of God, who is with us, who is one of us, and shows us how to live. We know that Jesus was obedient to God, and he participated in the work of the new creation, where the least and the last are loved and cared for, where children grow up in safety, and where evil fails. We pray that in this new year, we can be true followers in the way of Jesus. We pray today that we can work together to cure the ills of the world. Help us to value all people because we know that they are all children of God made in your image. We ask that you place your loving hand on those who need healing and those who are struggling and broken. Let us take a minute to silently lift those that we want to lift in prayer. Now let us pray together the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. It's a new year, and we are already so grateful for all the ways you share love, light, prayer, financial gifts, time, and talent through Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Your giving provides the necessary resources to support our ministries together. You can make financial donations through DAUMC's online giving portal. The QR code is on your screen or on the back of your bulletin. You can set up automatic giving through your financial institution or through ours. You can bring offerings to DAUMC during worship in the sanctuary or mail to the church office. Thank you for sharing the light of Christ through your generous giving. 
Here are more ways to connect, grow in faith, and serve this week. A new grief share support group for help and encouragement after the death of a spouse, child, family member, or friend begins this Sunday, January 8th, from 11.45 a.m. to 1.15 p.m. here at DAUMC, as well as online. You can join at any time during the 13-week session. For more information, please check out the e-newsletter with registration links, speak with Doreen Killeen, or contact the church office. A new play group for young children and their grown-ups is meeting on Thursday mornings at 9.30 a.m. at DAUMC. Playing, conversation, prayer, and connection are all on the agenda. Please contact Lori Clemmer or the church office for more information. Everyone is welcome to the DAUMC Listening Conversations, Becoming a Reconciling Congregation. The first conversation is set for Monday, January 16th at 10 a.m. in the Great Hall at DAUMC. It includes brunch and nursery care. At these gatherings, we will learn, listen, and discuss what it means to be officially designated as a reconciling congregation with the full inclusion and affirmation of the lives and gifts of all people. Please read all of the information about the process and gatherings in our e-newsletter and courier newsletter. And please join in on Monday, January 16th, or at any of the other times as listed on your screen. Contact Pastor Meredith in the church office or Alan Griffey, chair of our DAUMC Welcome and Inclusion team with questions. All members and friends of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church are encouraged to attend a special church conference called for Sunday, January 22nd at 2 p.m. at DAUMC. At this gathering, we will celebrate, pray, discuss, seek God's guidance, and act on ways we will grow, support, and manage our 2023 ministry funding plan. Please mark your calendar now and join in this important meeting. If you have any questions, please contact Pastor Meredith in the church office. Bible art journaling is set to begin on Sunday, January 22nd from 4 to 6 p.m., this is a great way to spend time in your Bible while being creative through basic art techniques. No experience or special skills are needed, and supplies are provided, as well as a pizza supper. Sign up will be available soon, but mark your calendar now. Everyone is welcome. Thank you for all the ways you give, support, and connect through Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Please join us in singing Star Child. Oh, oh. 
Thank you so much for joining in this time of worship on this epiphany with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I pray that your whole experience has been meaningful and uplifting for you, that you will continue to join with us for online worship or come and join with us for worship in the sanctuary. We meet on Sunday mornings at 815 and at 1030. Again, I encourage you to use that contact form so that we can get in touch with you and get you all of the information on ways to connect and grow in your faith with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. And remember, there's a place on that contact form for you to put prayer requests that go straight to our pastors and prayer team. We love to pray with you, so please do use that today. Our benediction today has now become a tradition for us on Epiphany Sunday. It is from the poem, The Work of Christmas by Howard Thurman. And let's receive this benediction now. Hi, I'm Leia and I'm a member of the church. And I'm Aria and I'm part of the youth group. Please receive this benediction. When the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the king and the princes are home, when their shepherds are back with their flock, the work of Christmas begins to find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among brothers and sisters, to make music in the heart. Go now to find heal, feed, release, rebuild, bring peace, and create the joy. In Christ's name, amen. <laughs>